Good weekend all. I wrap in with your weekend edition of your Metal Market Wrap-Up, and this wrap-up is for Friday. And we're sitting here now at the 10th of November, 2023. It's the weekend. Wow, I was gone for three days. Sorry about that, but I do need time to clean my brain out every now and then, what's left of it, and uh, to think. And I do that. And when I go away, uh, I don't sit in front of a computer. I don't sit in front of financial TV. I will come out for my subscribers. They do my darn best to put out my updates. And I think if you're a paid subscriber, you got what you expected. And I do that. And I know you know I do that. Now, when I go abroad, it depends if I can do that if, uh, wherever I'm at. But I was in America in just three days, left Chicago, enjoyed it. Nice weather. Had a great time. Okay. So the one thing that you know we can see is that there's heavy negotiations going on right now for hostage release. Uh, it was breaking news tonight on the national news. I'm very upset with Netanyahu. He keeps saying Israeli hostages. Mr. Netanyahu, you are getting support from the US and other countries in major way. They are your allies. All hostages, not Israeli hostages. All hostages. I know Israel is fighting the battle, but I know we're all behind you. And we're taking heat for doing it on a world stage. All hostages. Got it? None of that other stuff. Um, this battle's doing pretty much what I thought it was going to do if Israel went into Gaza. It's going to be long. It's going to be drawn out. It is bloody. It's not as bloody for the Israeli soldiers so far, assuming we're not hearing wrong information. And there's just layers upon layers of tunnels. You know, today I heard, uh, I think it was NBC, 300 miles of tunnels. And then they were explaining how the tunnels can be one tunnel up here, another one under it, another one under that one. They can go all kinds of different ways. Well, there's one thing you do. You take them all out. By the way, when I say all out, I mean what I'm saying. Uh, Mossad blew it. How can you have over these years those many tunnels being built and you still allowed cement in? I, I don't get the whole idea. Uh, I remember years ago when they were arguing, we're not going to let any more in. The people need to have water and they need housing. Then they let in. Well, I can see where it went. So they were right on that, but it still went there. I don't know how you stop it. I don't know the answers to it, and none of us do. What we do know is gold's not responding positive, all right? Nor, even while you're up today on energies, you're not at $90 Brent. You're back down to 81, and you're under 80 in the crude. So the war itself, the U.S. has done a good job of not letting it spread to member states and them coming in, and so is Israel. So Israel doesn't have a front with Hezbollah. Yeah, they lob rockets at each other. That's like day-to-day -day living, apparently, in, in the Mideast. Uh, their battle's in Gaza, and the quicker and speedier they can do this, the better it will be. All right. They've already made it known, Israel, they don't want to be the, uh, they're not going to stay there to rule Gaza. But as the war goes on, they will stay there and rule Gaza. And the question is, how do they get away from ruling it? And there's so many things to be answered. Now, another big event that we got to get away from. What about our budget? It's like at the last minute today, it suddenly made the news again. I'm watching this morning first Bloomberg. Oh, yeah. What do you think of the budget? And they're going, well, doesn't look like we're getting anywhere. I know that. What are they going to shut down? Who's not going to get what? How does it work? So, and I'm surprised that the stock market is able to rally on all that because it's scary, all right? Some people are going to find that their jobs are not going to be going. My son's with the Forest Service, all right? Will he be furloughed? My guess is he will be. It's an easy thing to do, all right? Let's shut down the forest. He's with the forest, not the Park Service. So, as a forest ranger, bingo, he'll probably get some days off. Uh, the public, we've seen this before, the park shut down. You're not going to go to, guy, uh, you know, old yeller. Not the guys are for a while. Okay, I get all that. But then some more important offices, Social Security may close down. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that may happen. Tuesday supposedly is a big vote day, but I'm so surprised we rallied at it. So, in summation, I think that because the Israeli war has not spread and we're far into it already, it's what, a month already? 
Bingo. Gold down, silver down, nothing staying up on it. And bingo, energy's down. Seems to have taken away. And maybe this, the U.S. isn't involved. We're not firing missiles. We're not fighting with Iran right now. And stock market rallies. That's a possibility of, of the market mentality. When you look at the gold market on a monthly chart, monthly is very difficult to trade. It's down $56 for the month. You heard me, 56. This is only the 10th. Supports all the way back at 1860. Don't know if you'll get there or not. When you come to the weekly, I can tell you this is the one where you're going to fight your battle. You're at 1937.70 and the battle line is the red line, 1932.40. So markets like to fight at that 18 week to figure out what they're going to do. It obviously didn't spend any time fighting from the rally at the 1830 level all the way up, but that was the wartime scary rally, right? We didn't know if we were going to be fighting. We knew we sent two carrier groups. We're starting to get, what, 100 attacks. I, I've heard 40 and I've heard 100. I believe 100 is the right amount of attacks in Iraq and Syria were probably uh, been launched against us. We seem to respond by attacking, maybe wisely, just munition dumps where there's no people around so that we don't give others in the area a reason to say we're going in and killing their troops. Of course, they can try to kill ours and that's acceptable, but if we try to kill theirs, that may tip the war. This is the crazy mentality the Biden administration has. You voted them in. What can I tell you? Uh, lower low, higher high, and here's where you go with that. When I take a look at the weekly chart, you got a higher high and lower low. You have stepped out of the uptrend. And you see this very clearly. Here is the market straight on up. You even had that pause and then you went. If you take out this low, what you've done in the market is you break the pattern. So you've effectively got no pattern at this point. Logic tells me that you'll come back and fight the battle for support at the 18-day average. As on rallies here, you kept fighting for the resistance at the 18-week average. I wouldn't get overly bearish on this market unless you just think this Israeli situation is going to end. Remember, with it going on at any point, you could have a flashpoint. All of a sudden, everything gets crazy real fast. You know that. So I don't think you want to get too bearish on that. You went up, challenged the upper Bollinger Band. Stop. Exactly what I teach in my charting course. I mean, to the T. And when you did it, you were overbought. Right on the money. Okay? Now the gold-silver ratio. <clears throat> it tried one time for silver to get stronger and it hasn't been able to do it. It could go back to all this if the U.S. economy were to slow down and if gold gets a bid because of the war, right? Those would be the two elements we'd see. In silver, this is ugly. I thought the market was going to do a heck of a better job in trying to hang on. It's out and out bearish. Momentum starting to point down. You're under the 18-week average. You have to get back over 2375 on this pattern to negate the downtrend. And I think you'll have aggressive sellers between here now and 2336, the 18-day uh, average of closes on the way back up. In the copper market, we had a bear market rally. Why do I call it a bear market rally? I teach you here that when a market is under the red line, the bias is down. When it's over it, the bias is up. Bullish bias, bearish bias. The rallies in a market with a bearish bias when you're under it, bear market rally. Went up, challenged the combination of the 18-week average, got pretty close, didn't quite get there to the um, 200 week, missed it by a few cents, not even, a, let's just say 0. 0.6 cents, something like that, Six, not even a penny, and turn right back down. You could be going all the way down there. Why? Because China's economy is teetering. Now, admittedly, they are throwing money at it now. So they are trying to increase, like the rest of the real world, their debt ratio to GDP. They've been running traditionally 3% debt to their GDP. They're increasing to about 3.8. They're trying to get for not this year, but the year after, 
to believe that they can get back to 5% growth, but the market's saying it's going to be closer to 4.6, 4.8, and we haven't seen them under 5% in a very long time. That's not bullish copper. Then in the U.S., are we going to go into a recession or not? If you do, that wouldn't be bullish copper. So these bear market rallies in copper are just that. And if you're really a student of this, only for a short period of time did you get over that and were able to stay there. It's basically been a downtrend more than an uptrend. Platinum market got absolutely hit. And I hear there's oversupply in palladium suddenly. So. Those markets getting hurt there. Car sales, as you know, especially electric car sales in the toilet. You're not seeing that they're making money. Uh, it's like a, a price war to sell them. How fast can I give you one at a discount? And that's America. That's not how it is in the rest of the world. Always remember that. But you can see you're just coming down here. Last in the dollar index, you just stepped out of an uptrend. You have a market that's flirting. The word is flirting with trying to lose an embedded reading. It needs a strong performance this week upward to not have that happen. If it doesn't get that, the likelihood of getting back to 104, 13, 14, very much in the cards. So you're right at the cusp where you have to retain strength and move to the upside. I'll talk about all this and a heck of a lot more in the mornings. Now, here's what I do. First thing in the morning, 5, 5, 10 a.m. Central Time, I start recording futures. Futures are what many ETFs are based on. Your stock indices are, your bond markets, your metal ETFs, I can go on and on. Um, so I do that first. I wait then for another half hour after 8.30 the opening, I want to, I start recording about eight, after the stock market opens, 15, 20 minutes later. But I want to get all the news. Sometimes I'll just hit pause on my recording, get the news, because a lot of news comes out between 8 and 9 a.m. Central Time. And that's obviously 9, 10 a.m. Eastern Time. And I want to get that to you, and then we're doing the other. So there's 40 futures markets. Monday through Friday, I cover primarily daily, but I will always look at a weekly or two in there, especially if I have a trade recommendation, because weeklies can act as a filter. Then we move over, like I said, and we start going in as we're going with the ETFs. They'll be covered here with many individual stocks. So there's plenty of them. I rotate them all the time. Uh, like I've been covering recently, I had done um, nuclear. And I brought it up, didn't realize it. Illinois has got a bill coming at it to bring back nuclear energy. I hope it passes. We need it. It is cheap. It can be efficient. It can be run well. I mean, you could still have oil spills, my friends. I know nuclear is different, but where they put these is also in an area that you can contain them, and they're not as big as you might think. So they're very, very important as to what they do. But I think that the reality of the cost of wind and solar has hit America right between the eyes, and you can sell all the leases you want offshore. Nobody's building them. They keep looking at the cost, they look at what the turbines run, and they're going, what the heck, I can't make any money doing this. You see how many are going on that have been recently leased. There's more cancellations of them than there are starting new properties. That's the point that I'm making. So you put it together, we, we try to cover all this, we talk about it. Each one of the videos, on average, I'm gonna be 15 to 18 minutes typically. Do I occasionally go over by design? I do. I can go 30 minutes, but it doesn't matter. On the bottom, when you're looking at the video, there's a scroll bar on our website. Just drag it. It tells you what section you're in of what I'm doing. And you can get right where you want. Some people want the whole thing. I mean, again, a lot of people, they want to see that each time because I throw so much information and every day is a bit different. How do you go get it? Ah, it's so simple. Go to irapstein.com, go to the word research, move your cursor up here, you'll see an icon if you're on a PC. Uh, it could be an Apple product, you know, nothing wrong with Mac, it'll work. Uh, give it a click on the icon, it'll take you there as well. Read about it and away you go. Just sign up and you're in business. If you're watching me on YouTube, you see on the bottom it says members. Give it a click, that's where you sign up there. I'm irapstein, you have yourself a great day. I will talk to you come Monday. Take care.